As an isekai connoisseur, I always look for new and interesting isekai series to get into. Parodies, slice of life, reverse isekais, fantasy characters getting isekai'd into a different fantasy realm. All of these are fun, interesting takes on the genre, but personally, I think we need more science fiction isekai. And while some may argue with me that the Galactic Navy officer becomes an adventurer isn't technically an isekai, it does have a lot of the tropes, which makes it fun to read. In the distant future, mankind has explored the stars. A thousand years before our story begins, an agricultural colony was completely wiped out by a race known only as the Bugs. And now, two years into its mission, the Galactic Empire ship Iris Conrad searches for the homeworld of the Bugs, seeking to end this war once and for all. While awake from cryosleep, First Lieutenant Alan Corinth performs routine maintenance on the ship. Despite traveling through hyperspace, deep space travel still takes an inordinate amount of time. He spends some time discussing his research with the AI captain. She gives him some grief about why he'd want to create a standalone VR system as opposed to one connected to the online environment. Obviously, he just wants to do something perverted. When suddenly, their ship is attacked. Massive explosions rock the ship. Nanomachines, or Nanom as they're called here, repair Alan's wounds. He wonders if it was the bugs that attacked them, but there's been no report that the bugs have the technology to attack a ship in hyperspace. The ship is forced out of warp. Alan discovers that out of a crew of 1,200, he is the sole survivor, making him the de facto captain of the Iris Conrad. The ship is adrift, and the AI informs Alan that they are on a collision course with a planet. With life support systems down, repairs on the ship cannot commence until Alan evacuates via an escape pod. Landing on the surface of the planet, the first humanoids Alan encounters are small, aggressive creatures with green skin. He tries to approach them, but is attacked. He's forced to kill them all. Eventually, he comes across evidence of civilization, hoof prints and wheel marks in a dirt road. Hopeful in finding people who are connected to humanity, he races off after them. You see, centuries ago, humans first encountered other humans. On the third planet of the Adele system, people from Earth encountered beings genetically matching humanity. Though this was the first, it would not be the last time humans found humans already thriving on habitable planets. The working theory is that there was a race in the distant past who seeded humans on various worlds to ensure survival. So when Alan found human beings attacked by a pair of wolf-like creatures, he didn't hesitate to save them. Unfortunately, he arrived too late and was only able to save a single girl. Using nanotech, he's able to stop her bleeding, but she's lost both an arm and a leg. She wakes up to see Alan taking care of the dead. She thanks him, though Alan doesn't understand the language yet. Through gestures, the two begin to communicate, and Alan bears witness to her praying over the spirits of the dead. And suddenly, the girl he saved starts to glow. Through his nanum, Alan is able to communicate with the ship's AI. He's able to summon information, heal himself, force his body to run for 100 kilometers, or shut off pain receptors. Minor injuries are healed almost instantly. He does have to take rare metal supplements to keep the nanom working, but that's a small drawback for such a power. However, in all the encounters with those who are connected to humanity, there has never been a recorded incident of humans using magic. There was one incident where a creature in the Erida system was able to teleport several meters away, but nothing else in recorded history. But for some unknown reason, magic exists in this world and humans can use it. Later on in the series, and this isn't really a spoiler because it's in the title, Alan becomes an adventurer. He has a specific goal in mind and works with Claria, the girl he found, to achieve it. But if you want to find out what that goal is, you'll have to read The Galactic Navy Officer Becomes an Adventurer yourself. As far as why I consider this series an isekai, Alan is trapped on this new world, and because they were pushed out of hyperspace, there is a good chance that he will never be rescued. The world is clearly a medieval fantasy world with goblins, monsters, and magic. There are kingdoms, society is mostly feudal in nature with numerous guilds, including an adventurer's guild, providing a variety of services. But just like many other isekai, the main character learns magic, but then twists it to his own understanding. Rather than casting nuclear fireballs or other splashy effects, Alan develops a sort of radar, allowing him to track living organisms. The series is a lot of fun, but it is quite violent. 
This is to be expected when reading any manga involving swords and sorcery. When you cut the head off a boar or a wolf in twain, there will be blood. If that bothers you, you should probably stay away. But for those who aren't bothered by violence and who love fun isekai stories, I promise that you'll have a good time with this series. Thanks for tuning in. Once again, a huge shout out to Mater to Cute Stuff. I couldn't make these videos without her. If you'd like to hire her to edit your own videos, there's a link to her Fiverr page below. I'm doing a push and trying to post new videos every weekday for the next few months, so look forward to lots of new videos in the future. Or you can click here for more fantasy or isekai content. I've also started a Patreon. You can click the link below or go to patreon.com slash Stay safe and I'll see you all again next time on Musings by Danan.